Portland launched a major campaign to lower residential speed limits to 20 miles an hour, handing out 7,000 yard signs declaring 20 is plenty. But after all of that effort, average speeds dropped by only 1% percent, only a quarter mile per hour slower. Clearly, signs alone weren't cutting it. Other studies show that for every five mile an hour decrease in the speed limit, actual speeds drop by only about one to two miles an hour. Even the Federal Highway Administration admits most drivers at the study sites did not make major alterations in their speed after new speed limits were posted. They admitted that in 1997, by the way. That was nearly 30 years ago. So we've known for a long time that speed limits aren't effective. Why aren't they effective? Well, it comes down to how we perceive risk while driving. Take a look at this road. It would probably feel agonizing to drive 20 miles an hour on a road that looks like this. Your internal cues are telling you it's safe to go one speed, while an external cue, like a sign, might say something different. Do you trust your eyes or that sign more? Road design shapes your behavior far more effectively than any sign can. Real speed speed limits aren't determined by signage on the side of the road, but by how close trees are, the width of the road, and other obstacles. Now take a look at these two roads. Which one would you probably drive faster on? They're both 20 mile per hour zones, but that top one has a lot more clear space. It sure would feel a lot better driving fast down that street. And as a result of designing our roads like that top picture, pedestrians are four times as likely to die on a spacious suburban neighborhood street than on the narrow streets of traditional neighborhoods. This study took a look at the speeds people go depending on the width of the road, and no surprise, wider roads meant faster speeds. The key takeaway from studies like this is that drivers intuitively match their speed to road design, not to posted speed limits.